Hello and welcome, RC Shim in Hangar, and today my video will be about batteries, how to take care of them, and more importantly, how will it affect their lifespan if you follow a few simple rules, and how my results were when testing these packs. So these packs are like one and a half years old. I tested them all when I got them new. And now I had the idea to test them after one and a half years of moderate use. I stored them in a good temperature of around 20 degrees Celsius on average and also around 3.8 volts of storage charge, which seems to be the most important thing to take care of your packs. How this affects the performance and the longevity of your batteries, you will see it in this video. So these packs, I just took out a random pack out of these 15 batteries. They can deliver a lot of power, but you need to take care of them. And the main issue is like now it's the season of fogginess here in Austria, short days, you hardly have time to fly even with those nighttime camps. So you might find yourself in a position where you charge your some packs because you think you can go fly and then you cannot and you leave them for a week or so in your backpack and that's not good. And Budwell also did of course a good video with his opinion to batteries and I very much support his point where your batteries have a given amount of budget of time they can lie there on your bench charged fully and if this budget is exhausted then your pack will just not perform that well. So it's not how long can I store them like fully charged a week is okay. No, it's not okay. It sums up. So the less amount of days you have them lying there fully charged, the longer they will live. That's the, the short way to put it. So I did this one and a half years ago. You've seen the results. And I also did this like now a month ago. I flew a lot of packs on one consecutive flight session, which was fun. I fly all of those packs. I try to fly them similar, but the main test will be a fully charged pack, a huge punch out, three second punch out, full throttle. And I will have open TX telemetry recording inside the Tango. And this shall be the indicator of uh, how powerful are those batteries. But enough talking, let's get it on with the flying. And boy, it will be a lot of flying, uh, which is not too bad in mid-October, very warm midday sun.
Okay, oh boy, those were quite a lot of packs. I skipped the ones that I have multiple examples of. I'm curious to see how they perform in terms of data. I collected a lot of data on my Tango. I will wrap this up on the table and tell you my like my long-term experience. Like right now from the fly flying, each of the packs performed quite good. Uh, good enough for me, for sure. Uh, maybe if you're a top tier pilot or a racer, then you always need the best batteries. But for me, even uh, sorry to pick a bad example, but for me, even the China, uh, China Hobby Line thing is here, which I know the sag the most. They work quite nicely. So, but still, we will see all the data in a short time. See you there. And I have a lot of numbers because I'm a number geek. <laughs> So up here are the single battery runs and it's simple. The blue line is the voltage sag. So you see this battery, it began at around 24.5 volts when I just hovered and then I applied full throttle and it went down a bit over 19 volts, which is not too good, but that's a tattoo R line, supposedly one of the best batteries I have. And the yellow line is just the amperage that I draw out. That's on the second side here. It's all the way up to 100 amps. I repeated this procedure for each of the packs. So here on this graph, I laid them all on one timeline. And the best is the red one here, 113, the Tiger Power. Battery names. Uh, my packs have numbers, just these bars or numbers represent the number of times I charged. Noted when I used them first, so how old are these? I measured the temperature of the pack, because if you have a pack with a high internal resistance, then the battery will get really hot if you demand a lot of it. So this 45 degrees tells me this 1100 Demon they struggled. Then here's your starting voltage and where it sagged to. And you can also, of course, calculate the difference in volts. The internal resistance, the lower the better. Uh, that's something that you can measure with your charger. I also noted their internal resistance when they were new. The things with really high internal resistance, they also perform quite bad. But here the copter might be a limiting factor. That might be the limit of what the motors really draw. You can download this Excel spreadsheet in from a link down below. Basically, it's if you have a OpenTX radio, be it a Taranis or a Tango or whatnot, you can have the telemetry, in my case from the Crossfire receiver. The Crossfire receiver speaks with the radio back and forth. It can transmit all the beta flight values that we get, like voltage, amperage and whatnot. Uh, back to the radio and on the radio you can store it to your SD card and then you just take this uh, Excel-like file from your SD card, put it into Excel and then you can make a chart and, and analyze the data quite nicely. In the end you don't want to have your batteries to lay there on your desk charged for a lot of days. It doesn't matter if those days are consecutive or just accumulated over a year. It just hurts the chemistry of your cells. To counter this, like yesterday, I couldn't get to fly and I used something like this. It's the ISDD FD200. It's not sponsored. I bought this. Those things are not cheap. What are they? Like 100 or 150 dollars? But they are really good at discharging your packs to a set amount of volts. Like 3.8 is the set limit. You just plug in the pack. You don't need external power, because you get power from this thing here. You plug in your pack, you press it. You can then set up that it's a 6S pack, because you don't connect the balance lead. And you can also define with how many amps it should discharge. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 amps. And then it would just uh, burn some energy by creating heat. That's why it has a fan. But you can leave it there, it will discharge itself until the limit is reached. 
or just if you don't want to spend this money you can also go in your yard and like hover them them copters for like three minutes or something like this to get them to start charge uh, this is the more accurate uh, version of discharging them of course and it really pays off because those packs those batteries are not cheap they are 20 to 30 or 40 dollars each if you want to fly a lot you have to have like 10 of these so it's a lot of money you invest and you want to take good care of this so thanks a lot for watching this video hope it helps you if you have any questions feedback suggestions to battery care uh, leave it down below I will have uh, all of the information that I can come up with that comes to my mind when it comes to batteries like link to old videos of mine or to like the Bardwell video in the uh, info box below of course so always look there first thanks a lot for my sponsors my patrons over there like thanks Jose Jose is one of my newest patrons thanks a lot it's very much appreciated Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.